Welcome everyone to our webinar about the impact of well-being on employee performance. Our goal here is to, is to discuss how important is well-being in your business and how you can support your employees with, uh, with well-being. We have here with us today Tom. He is one of our HR business partners here at Sodexo and Deb as Elf as an account manager and they will support us explaining some numbers that we have around the well-being, some ideas what we are doing here at Pluxy. So I will go ahead with them and please if you have any questions just pop here in the chat and we'll try to answer all of them in the end. So thank you very much and you can go ahead guys. Thank you Mariana. Good morning everyone. I um, hope everyone's had a good start to the day. Before before we, we really get started, I think it'd be quite useful, and, and Debbie and I were talking yesterday um, about the topic of wellbeing and how wellbeing is such a wide topic and can mean so many different things to everybody. So my first impromptu question, uh, Debbie, for you is, can you, can you think of a time when a business, either our business or a previous business, has intervened on something well-being and and what was it and what made such a difference to you? Oh thanks Tom, morning everybody, thanks for joining us. Um, well-being for everybody is a topic that's really close to my heart and actually there is one benefit that springs to mind so I've been uh, with Pluxy a decade now, this is my 10th year and when I first joined I was a working single parent with a children of school age and you know your 25 days holiday is great but to have the annual leave purchase that we have as employees here at uh, Pluxy and also as part of our benefits offering for, um, for our clients made an enormous difference to my family life. Um, it meant that we were actually able to have a holiday in the summer holidays because if any of you are working parent families you'll know that time is precious and time with your loved ones um, is even more precious and so Tom for me it was, it's always been annual leave purchase all the way. Um, it really is one of those benefits that just makes, has that impact, you know, on your well-being as an individual, but also on the well-being of, of the people that you surround yourself with. So right back at you, Tom, um, when we're talking about benefits, and we're in a very privileged position here at Pluxy, because of course, not only do we um, live and breathe benefits, but we also are very lucky to be able to have everything. Um, so for you, Tom, whether it's been with us or whether it's somewhere else and um, what's the benefit that's impacted your life the most do you think? I think I think it's quite interesting in that um, it, for me it's two things one it, it is a it's a physical benefit um, which you know like like for sure everyone on the call um, we have to buy groceries that's it that's a fact of life um, and up until I joined Pluxy actually I would always shop at Tesco's which was easy for me convenient it's the closest one to the house um, so from a, a, a physical benefit point of view, we have a cashback card and I've always been rubbish at cashback, vouchers, loyalty schemes. Um, but just the simple fact of getting cashback through Sainsbury's changed. I drive a little bit further, um, but actually all of my shopping happens at Sainsbury's now. And I, mm. and I think I've worked out I'm making about £40 cashback a month just on things that I would have had to buy anyway. Um, so that's that's probably the physical one. But actually underneath that, we'll, we'll talk more about this this morning is the culture behind that. So, you know, whether it's physical benefits that we have access to, we're really fortunate that there's a long conversation in this business about how people use their products, um, how people make savings. But actually the biggest one um, was flexible working. So I know uh, every other Friday I have off um, and that probably combined with things like the cycle to work scheme means I have that time, that balance to really switch off um, spend some time either traveling or exercising or doing something else that I struggle to fit in during the week and actually for me it was more the there was no question about it it's just culturally accepted and that gives great encouragement for um, other people um, but also for me personally in that even at a senior leadership level we embrace flexible working. Mm, that's a good one I mean it, it is all about that balance isn't it when we talk about benefits and the impact on us as as employees and as humans um, and how you know you can support your people simply by ensuring that balance is there um, yep. you know and giving them that permission to make those choices about the benefits that work best for them. Yeah absolutely so without further ado though so I, I started off by saying that actually well-being is very different for people 
and I think we, sh we should all be fairly familiar as business leaders, HR professionals of these topics, but there's been a number of big things over the last four or five years that, that probably not only have shaped work in a different way or reshaped it for people, but actually have been a real consistent thing that almost every one of us have experienced in, in some shape or form, which has meant that it's been very easy to have similar conversations with each other. Um, you know, so we know that started with things like it, it goes back even further, but certainly the pandemic was a big watershed moment for us all in terms of that immediate change to people's working lives. Um, you know, I really struggled with the being at home, not seeing people, not interacting. Um, and many people I speak to could feel a change over those years of, of that isolation that happened for different people around the world. But we were all consistently experiencing it. So there was an ability to have a shared conversation and understand it. It's also led on to a number of other things like um, the, the transformational one or the pace at which hybrid working has changed for many organisations. Um, we, we all experience the, uh, the narrative of the great resignation or the silent resignations um, or quiet quitting. But actually, the most the most recent one for me is, is that, you know, has certainly impacted all of us, regardless of your role, what you do, your lifestyle, certainly is the cost of living crisis. Which, which still continues and, and will do even for a period of time as people struggle to build back up to what they had. Um, the positive I take from that though, and, and what it means for organisations is it gave an ability for people, certainly in our organisation, to have a consistent conversation. So, you know, whether it was talking about the cost of petrol, utilities, um, grocery shopping, everyone felt it was normal to have a conversation about the struggling impact of finance. Which, which often we know from our research that I'll, I'll talk about in a second, that um, it, it's not a topic that people feel particularly comfortable talking about in terms of their personal finances or, or even have a level of knowledge um, that gives them comfort to talk about it. So the real benefit for me through cost of living was actually everybody in the organisation in one way or another was talking about the cost of living crisis. And I'm sure many people on this call and when we might hear some questions or thoughts that um, in your organisations, this was a consistent conversation that was happening with people. And it might not have just been about the cost of living. It might have been about um, people talking about the need to find savings elsewhere. Um, I, the cost of living for me was certainly an opportunity to revisit old direct debits that maybe I'd forgotten about um, to bring some money back. So, so what it did and what we saw certainly was that there was a tone of conversation that people were struggling with different ways, different things, different life setups. And when we um, go to our money mastery survey, where we spoke to um, two th over 2000 um, people with adults and 500 people from the HR profession, we could see a really consistent picture for me, which is um, that over half of the HR professionals we spoke to physically saw signs that people in their organization were worrying about their finances. Um, of the 2000 um, people we asked, 62 were comfortable to state that they were um, they were noticeably stressed, particularly about their own finances. Um, and the, the knock on effect, actually, both in terms of um, absenteeism, and we'll, we'll talk about the increase that we've seen in absenteeism, predominantly caused by stress related factors, um, but also the lack of productivity. When I think back to whilst it was great that everyone was having a conversation about um, the cost of living crisis and engaged immunity to people, you couldn't start a meeting without that coming up at some point. So actually the not only the, the direct impact, but actually the distraction that it gives to people who are trying to balance things, focus on different things, and then aren't able to perform at their best, which can often compound the issue of feeling need to catch up, um, needing to work a bit more to balance um, how they manage their personal finances. So, uh, and we can see actually, um, certainly from, from other survey data that we pulled in, that the absenteeism within the UK has, has it reached its highest level for a decade. Now, some people present that as quite a shocking stat. I'm not shocked by it. It's not surprising, particularly given that we can see and hear people struggling with different things in their life on a daily basis. Um, and that, that can compound and create a need to take a break. But actually, if people are taking a break through sick not really taking a break and switching off and the, the stresses and the pressures remain when people come back. Then there's the knock-on effect. So whilst we talk very much about financial well-being, um, it impacts everything. You know, whether whether you're struggling to finance the, either the time or, or the cost to go to the gym, go to clubs, spend time with your friends and family, 
there's not many things that I think I do at the moment that doesn't involve having to spend money on something, be it catching up with a good friend, which is you know so important for mental health, but that comes at a cost. And um, that actually that knock on effect was really impacting people with with nearly three quarters saying actually it's adding more stress to their lives on top of everything else that people are trying to keep up with. Slightly more worrying, actually, we saw that when um, when we asked people in the survey, where do you go to for support and, and who do you turn to? Just uh, less than 20 percent of people would turn to their employer to ask for help, be that either in the form of benefits or in the form of um, salary advances or access to um, ways to save money or to manage their finances better. So, so we know it's something that's causing an impact for at least half of people in organisations, but, but less than a quarter of them are willing to have a conversation or feel comfortable to have a conversation with their employer, which presents a real challenge, um, but also has that knock-on effect we talked about earlier in terms of people being distracted, not able to contribute to the level that they want to contribute to. Um, and, and actually, we know that you know that's the that's the in work um, productivity or engagement or or well being impact. But but the same impact in terms of actually long term absence. So over half of long term absences in the UK today are related to some form of mental ill health, um, which is compounded by stress. Um, and over three quarters of absenteeism in the UK has been reported as being some, related to um, stress be it financial, mental or, or physical well-being. Um, so we talk about this quite a lot in terms of poor, poor financial health, not only contributes to increased anxiety, but actually reduces the impact on productivity in a business. So um, regardless of, of the organisation you work in or the industry you work in, it's not just about supporting people for the benefit of supporting people. It has a detriment to the ability to achieve things within the organisation. Um, and we saw, um, like, like I think all businesses, um, when that cost of living crisis was particularly impactful, um, as I said, we could hear it in conversations. It, it dominated the majority of daily conversations for people. But we saw it particularly manifest in our engagement survey. And I think what's important for people to take from that is very few people are likely to say directly, I am struggling with my finances. It will come out in, in many different ways. And some of the conversations we had at the time was, um, people talking about coming back to work earlier than planned from their maternity leave. So we saw a real period of people coming back at nine months who had originally anticipated to take the full 12 months off. Um, and whilst no one actually directly commented on it, you could link that with our engagement survey um, in terms of the financial pressure was the biggest one. Now, we already had a, a well enhanced maternity and paternity policy. But hearing that and, and looking at that data source, knowing linked with the impact of cost of living crisis added to people who were who would constantly come in on a Monday and say I just did this great thing at the weekend I went to a concert you know, they have their stories that they tell us on a Monday and um, suddenly changed to more frequently I had a chilled weekend at home so so people aren't necessarily going to talk directly about this but what it told us was something's having an impact here and it's impacting different people in different ways so so we were faced with how do you how do you solve that problem? Now, on the one hand, you can say, well, increase everybody's pay, give them more money. Um, fantastic. But but let's be realistic in terms of the impacts on budgets that businesses face. Um, they pay increases tend to be short term fixes, particularly as increasing someone's pay doesn't reduce the stress and doesn't reduce the demands on their life. So so we took a really um, considered approach, I think, in terms of understanding those conversations that we were having, looking at our engagement data, and then speaking to our people to say, what can we do to help? And and the feedback we got was was brilliant in terms of it was very varied, so it was very difficult to pick one particular thing. Um, but what it did tell us was everyone needs help, and we can do something. So. Um, we did we did increase people's pay to support with cost of living crisis, which which had an impact. But but more importantly, um, we further enhanced things like our maternity policy. Um, Debbie, you'll remember, I think we've we both talked about how we used the wellbeing fund that we introduced, which was a really simple way of providing people with a budget to spend on something for their wellbeing. Now, whether that's um, yoga, I know you're a big fan of yoga. Um, mine was on camping gear. You know, people could could take that and spend the money on what they need to. There was no 
sign off or permission they needed to ask for it, which removed that awkward conversation, allowed people the freedom and the, the process in place, really, to manage things themselves, but with support from the organisation. And, and not only did we know it was an important thing to do, actually we saw that our, we have a specific question we ask about how well you rate our financial wellbeing benefits within Pluxy. And we saw that increase by 80% between the period of pre-intervention and post-intervention. And I think one of the most one of the most moving comments actually was um, at the town hall when we announced the packages that we introduced was that somebody actually said um, in, in the office, it's not really about percentage increase you've given us, it's the fact that you've really listened to us and you've understood we're struggling with something and how can you help? Um, and that was the more moving bit actually, making it personal, but also giving people optionality in terms of what they need, how they access their benefits and what works from them. So, so when I bring that back to um, our Money Mastery survey, we then asked um, those 2000 working professionals and 500 HR professionals, what are the things where people um, don't receive financial support at work? What would be the things that mean the most to them? And, and actually what we saw was the two highest ones, one was employee saving schemes um, and one was money management tools. So that, that told us in some of the follow-up interviews that what people actually want is the freedom to manage things themselves. They don't need direct intervention. Um, they wanna have a range of tools and options to support saving money on whatever the everyday things are that they purchase, be it their food shopping, be it a bike through a cycle to work scheme, um, but also access to people who can give them advice on things like um, pensions or financial advice or tools and ways to save money where um, we saw a huge spike of increase to our employee assistance program during the peak of the cost of living crisis. Um, not, not actually specifically for mental health support, more for what, what are the tools or places I can go to to better manage my own finances or understand things. Um, and interestingly, when I talk about um, having a diversity of benefits, it's probably two perspectives to this. One is uh, that's very easy to listen to a benefits provider that naturally you'd assume we have quite a lot of things. Um, and it's easy to say, well, you have to introduce so many different things. To some degree, yes, to provide people with, with the choice and freedom, but something as simple as um, access to discounts or our wellbeing fund um, meant that people could spend it on yoga, spend it on cycling. Um, Jamie, I think, spent it on some bindings for his snowboard, um, which you can look at and say, well, how is that wellbeing? And, and Jamie very well articulates, I feel happy when I'm snowboarding. So they're giving him the ability to, to manage that himself. Um, and Rachel booked herself some lessons to go indoor climbing. So that something very simple, which um, the mechanic of it was through expenses uh, claim approach, gives people a huge amount of range and flexibility um, to, to support themselves. But equally, it's not just about doing everything to everyone. It's about speaking to your people, understanding what matters to them, and starting from where you are. It's probably one of the best bits of advice I've given when we speak to clients more recently, is you know we, we introduced a wellbeing fund. That might not be right for your organisation. You might not introduce a cycle to work scheme if you're very, very out of town and your workforce is more remote or, um, or people are less likely to cycle in. But providing something else, be it through an EAP or through access to discounts for people to save money on their every day, tends to have a better range in terms of who can access it and, and where the uptake sits. But equally, it's about um, this continuous improvement approach of introducing something, learning from it, asking people, did it work? And being really open um, with your people to say, you know, we've tried this, does it work? How could we support more? Um, or what more would you like to see? So I do feel like I've probably talked for quite a while. Um, so I will I will pause. I think um Debbie, I'm gonna hand over to you because I think we've got an opportunity to talk through some maybe some more practical examples and demo some of the solutions that we use. Mm, indeed, yeah. So that's great, Tom. Thank you. I hope everybody is is enjoying this this morning when we talk about benefits it is about the impact that it has on the individual's lives and and you know the wider people that we care for whether that be you know uh, parents elderly family 
cat, dog, mum, whatever it might be in your world. So I thought what would be really useful is actually to really just to show you the range of of, uh, of benefits that are available. Now, when we talk about well-being, it's a massive topic and can be very difficult to pin down. You know, you've got lots of people. Well-being means something different to every individual in your organisation. What well-being means to me doesn't necessarily mean it's going to apply to you as well. But we operate within what we refer to as the three pillars of well-being. And Tom's mentioned this already. So you have obviously the financial well-being, which is critical to all of us. We're all affected by it, whether you are top of the tree or slightly further down, um, you are going to be affected by financial well-being at some point. And that could be, you know, just your weekly shop, making sure that your budgets are there and earning cash back from our cards or perhaps, you know, reaching out and using the discounts platform in that way. Or it might be a slightly more aspirational side of things where you're wanting better holidays or, you know, time away with your family and friends to spend on days out and things that you enjoy. When we look at physical and mental well-being, you know, we do not take our work head off when we go home and put our home heads on. Uh, we are very much interconnected and everything that affects us during the day will affect us in the evening. And so <clears throat> ensuring that your people are able to access benefits, which give them a balance during their working days is, is really quite important in these days. So with no further ado, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to share um, the opportunity to just walk you through very briefly our benefits offering. So our benefits platform, as I've said already, covers the three pillars of well-being. So physical, financial and mental well-being. And there is a, a well-being link that travels all the way through those three categories as well. So it might be that you have great mental health and you're never experiencing anything which causes you to be needing to reach out. But it also might be that perhaps financial well-being is on your mind. You're awake at three o'clock in the morning and you just can't work out what's happening. You know, having things like an EAP service in place or an ability for your people to actually reach out and talk to somebody outside of work can be the difference between getting back to a place of, you know, equilibrium in your well-being um, or not. And it is quite that simple. So this is our Flexi Benefits platform. It's all encompassing. Um, it's a great way. It's a one stop shop for all of your benefit needs and is very, very simple to use. <clears throat> You'll see here there's a range of different offers. There's a range of different um, things that you can see on the platform. Retailers, we've got a, a huge range of, uh, of, of benefits that, and discounts that you're available to have. Ways to save is a great place to start. Um, we have uh, a mixture of e-vouchers which are digital instant vouchers delivered to you so when Tom's talking about his Sainsbury's deliveries he's got a choice of e-vouchers or indeed using our Pluxy card. Our Pluxy card is our cashback card this is virtual it can be a virtual card it can be a, a physical card that you hold in your wallet or purse um, but it's a great way for individuals to be able to use their um, to be able to build up those cashback savings and affect their financial well-being. But more importantly, what you'll see here in front of you is actually a, a highlighted list of all the benefits that we are able to support our people with. Um, when we're talking about physical well-being, we all know the benefits of movement. We all know that it helps reduce stress. It helps you to sleep better. You know, these are critical when we are looking at ourselves as humans. Um, we're in the summer, supposedly. So it's meant to be an opportunity for us to move our bodies in a, in a better way. And you've got, again, a range of nationwide gym memberships. You've got at home movement, but you also have access to our cycle to work scheme as well. So that's in terms of physical well-being. There are many ways that you can give your people the opportunity to support themselves. And as Thomas said already, it is about giving them the power in their hands. Um, it's not necessarily about, you know, telling them what they can have. It's about saying this is what we can do for you because you are with us. When we start to look more around the types of um, you know, EAP services. We've got a great app that works, which is the My Possible Self app. Um, this empowers the individual to help to support them to really build their toolbox of their own um, mental well-being. And so it encompasses lots of different areas in which you can help. But the great thing, of course, is you always have the counselling service should you need it as well. There are many, many benefits that we can talk about. We've talked about the annual leave purchase already. That is a massive favourite of mine. We know that in terms of EAP services, um, menopause is, is you know, a big topic for many people at the moment. 51% of the population will go through it, but 100% of us are affected by it. 
And so again, with our EAP service, you've got a really great support network there with the menopause matters. Um, we also have an online GP. We know that it can be difficult to get GP appointments these days. Um, and so again, it's it's another physical and mental well-being opportunity that you can help and support your people with. Um, Tom mentioned about cycle to work. Sometimes it's not possible to have a cycle to work scheme because your people live further away from the office. We have a green car scheme as well, which plays into that quite nicely for you. So if that's something else that you're considering, you know, all of these are available through us for, for your people. But it's about ensuring the two things. It's giving them the permission to choose for themselves. And it's also giving them the education about what's possible with all of our benefit needs. So I'm going to pause there, Tom, um, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen because I think it's quite a nice opportunity for us to really reflect and talk about how, you know, financial well-being, physical and mental, you know, really does impact the life of the individual when they are within the working day. And, you know, as, as our HR business partner, you see firsthand the impact that it has with us as employees of Pluxy, because, of course, it's critical that we get it right for our people. Um, and we mentioned the wellbeing fund as well. I know that there is a question that's been posed in the chat um, by Catherine, who's asked, how much was the wellbeing fund and, and how did we reach that figure? I mm. thought it might be, I know we said we would pause and have questions at the end, but as you talked about it already, I thought it might be mm. a nice opportunity for us to just share that, if that's yeah. okay. Indeed, and, and thank you for the question, Catherine. It's a great question. The um, So we, we introduced the scheme three years ago now, uh, two and a half years ago um, and what it allows people to do is to spend up to £75 per year on, on anything they want from a wellbeing perspective so um, we started really simply we started with what was the budget um, was where we started we knew we needed to put something in place so we started with £75 um, and um, wrote a very brief policy um, that says largely if it, if it helps your wellbeing then it's the wellbeing fund and and what we saw was in the first year um i think about 62 percent of people had accessed that across the organization and then uh, after enough time um and i say first year it was only live for the final three months of the financial year so we rolled people could benefit quite quickly over a short period of time across two financial years um but after we'd had an, enough examples of people that had shared things um, we did a we did a post actually on um, just on Teams very simply um, of people sharing how they'd spent their wellbeing fund and shared a couple of pictures of either something where I stole Debbie's yoga yoga photo from or <laughs> or Jamie snowboarding, but just to get to do two things really one to just inspire people and share the stories, but secondly to remind people that the wellbeing fund's there because I'm, I'm sure everyone on this call finds the same that you've maybe got. 100 messages throughout the course of a week to deal with before you even start thinking about what was that benefit thing that was communicated six months ago mm. um so it was partly to drive awareness and uh we saw actually that worked really well in the second year that people could claim through that uh we we've gone up to about 78 percent um uptake from the organization um and then this year now interestingly we're tracking at um 56 percent and there's a really fascinating reason why which is Around about the same time, we introduced um, a concept uh, called Smart Pay, which mm. actually came from a bespoke, if I recall correctly, it came from a bespoke service that we provided to one client that had specifically requested it. Mm. Um, and we saw an opportunity actually to make that a wider proposition, but to adopt it ourselves. And, and the premise was really simple, which was, you know, the wellbeing fund is one thing. There were a couple of examples of people that spent their wellbeing fund on uh, a replacement bike, to, uh, replacement car tyre. <laughs> which I'm sure helped them, but but I don't particularly think of car tyres and wellbeing that often. Um, and, and one of the conversations we had actually was someone said, you know, these things happen either you, know, you need to replace the tyre, your washing machine packs up, um, and you can't really plan for those things. And having the disposable cash to suddenly go and buy something is quite difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, so some people were using the wellbeing fund for that. Some people were waiting to buy the vouchers at a discounted rate. Um, but, but I remember a really good conversation with with someone in our business who said, you know, it's brilliant that we've got all these things, but I need a washing machine right now um, because otherwise my kids are going to school in dirty clothes. So so we introduced SmartPay, which very simply 
if I'm really blunt about it, is to stop people from feeling they need to go to pay their loans, bank loans, where there's an APR attached to it. Hmm. And it and it very simply means you request the amount of money you need for a voucher in, in one of uh, it's about 11 retailers, such as um, Halfords, John Lewis, Ikea, et cetera. Um, and we'll give you the voucher immediately. And then you can pay that back over a 12 month period. Um, hmm. But at, at no percent APR. So that that was quite interesting for us in that we launched the wellbeing fund. Then we stopped and listened to a couple of other things that were happening, thought about a different way. Um, and when I look at how many people access the wellbeing fund so far this year, obviously we've got we've got a couple of months left of the financial year, but more people have used SmartPay as a prime example of adapting and evolving it um, mm. very quickly and something that that doesn't actually cost us anything in terms of you know, it's effectively a short term, no APR loan to employees to pay back over a period of time. So, um, so I've, I've trailed off the topic of well-being, but to answer <laughs> your question, Catherine, it's, it's at the moment £75 per month, um, per year that people can access. And um, when we conclude our next engagement survey in August, no doubt we'll ask people your reflections on, does it work? Should it be different? Should we adapt it in a different way? It was really, it was so powerful when when that announcement came out, the response from colleagues was actually, oh, they care, which I think is often underestimated mm. when you are talking about benefits. You know, benefits are, everyone knows, you know, the, the basic benefits that everybody wants, but actually it's, it's how you can have that impact, a sustainable impact on an individual's life while they are within your organisation as an employee. Um, and oh there's another question about it this is great so jill has very kindly asked how did you ensure they spent this fund on well-being well i can answer that one for you tom um so internally at pluxy i am part of the well-being team we're very lucky to have a team of um volunteers within the organization who are also mhfas um and actually what we did we we had some rules written um about how people are able to spend um, and what they can spend on it had to be directly linked and impacting your well-being um, and you know we didn't have too many strange questions there was a few questions about um, <laughs> PC consoles or game consoles um, but once the communication was shared with our colleagues around actually what the well-being fund is for most people you know understood and got the message um, and so, yeah, it's it's been great. I know I myself, I um, I don't know about what you bought, Tom, but I, I randomly bought a cold plunge pod, um, for for my well being this year, um, which is which is great, but uh, takes a bit of getting used to. But the really wonderful thing is, beyond that, what we did when we're talking about company culture, certainly at Pluxy, is everybody shared what they purchased. So whether it was a pair of trainers for the gym, whether it was a new badminton racket, whether it was a spa day, because of course that was within the parameters of, of supporting your well-being. Another individual bought plants for their allotment because that supported them with their own well-being. And so it's really about understanding what our colleagues wanted and needed. Um, but it's been very interesting to um to see how it's been used um, on a on a personal level you know, outside of outside of just gym memberships, which of course, if you're not a gym person, it's not going to be the thing you want to do. I'm certainly not. Yoga's way more my speed. Um, but yeah, so we, as a wellbeing team, we focused a lot on that internally. Um, but it does help to enhance our organisational culture as well. It'd be interesting to say that, Debbie. So I, I spent mine on a spa day, um, which, was, oh. which was great. Oh. Um, Jill, as you, as you asked that, I just brought up our policy on the other screen, and actually it is a one-page policy. And the only thing we say is the example. Here's some examples of things that are not eligible, which is mm. mobile phone, furniture, headphones, payments directly to individuals, or your food shop. That that was it. Anything else? Um, yeah, if it benefits you from a well-being perspective. Mm. Then, then claim it. And of course, in terms of um, ensuring they spent it as a expense at all, there's a wellbeing option that you just claim and it, it tags it as up to £75. Mm. Um, but I think when I come back to, um, not, not from a, a high and mighty perspective, but when I come back to the culture is we trust people to be responsible with it. Um, so, you know, it, it tends to one of the big success points was how lean that policy is in terms of 
Mm. But we, whatever works for you, please access the fund. And it's the engagement level as well, isn't it? When you are putting these types of um, additional benefits in place, actually, it, it then sparks the curiosity of your people to what else can they get? And, you know, that sort of translates itself back to your benefits offering, because we all know, you know, it's about ensuring that it stays at the forefront of people's minds. You might be worrying about your weekly shop and, and how you're going to set your budget. Smart pay is great. Um, but it might be that, you know, you need a whole range of those benefits that, that are going to support you. And when you encourage your people to talk about it openly, to have these open communications which are led from the top because it's really important that that message comes from your leaders as well you know it's mm. great we have all these stories of individuals sharing how they've used smart pay how much they save um with their discounts platform um with the plexi card how much they are creating cash back in their everyday lives and then what they're using that cash back to spend on it's it's about again it comes back to that balance of your well-being as a as a human being within the organization you know none of us work for free and we all have salaries and hard-earned salaries but it's about stretching that salary further and equipping your people with the ability to be able to do that because ultimately you know if you can't afford your weekly shop or your children need new school shoes or you need new bunk beds because unfortunately some of them have broken or your washing machine breaks down that's going to impact your mental health and we've all been through those situations no matter where you are in your you know, journey within that organisation. So now with a with a sort of a fully rounded benefits offer covering the likes of physical, mental and financial, it gives your people the permission to have this opportunity where they can say, actually, you know what, I can make my life better because this is this is where I am and this is who I work for and this is gifted to me by my organisation. And I think that's um, when we're talking about company culture, Tom, I don't know how you feel, but for me personally, I think that's quite a powerful message um, when we are supporting the people that we work with, because ultimately, you know, happy people equal, you know, productive people equals success in all areas, your organisation, your people, their lives. And, uh, and of course, circling back to that productivity, Tom, um, you know, because ultimately that's that's what we're all trying to reach, isn't it, uh, is a, as a happy equal state, um, both at work and out of work. It, it is, Debbie, I, I couldn't put it better. I think it, it reminded me, though, of um, a, a conversation not that long ago that I had, whereby, and, and it comes back to the point earlier about listening to what people say, but listening to what people don't say as well. Mm -hmm. And um, and I was having a chat with someone who'd been, um, I, I didn't know, but we had a we went for lunch and they said, I've been saving up for about five months because they wanted to get back into, um, they were relatively healthy before COVID. Um, mm -hmm. And then they'd stop for various reasons, and they decided at the start of this year they want to get back into health. So we we were just having lunch and having a, a conversation about it, and they they'd mentioned that they'd been saving up for um, since the start of the year to buy a, a bike so they could get back into cycling. And I said, oh, that's interesting. Did you, did you not think about the cycle to work scheme? And they said, oh yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. But anyway, it's irrelevant now because my dishwasher has packed up. So mm -hmm. you know. The, the wife has said all of that great money I saved is being spent on a new dishwasher mm. um, and it, it was a it was a wonderful moment where I remember saying I said look think about it differently you can do that on smart pay and you can do the cycle to work through mm. that and you're not actually spending the money that you saved immediately now anyway or you can just leave it to one side and use it to pay off um, certain things um, and uh, I, won't, I won't share their name but I'm sure they'll work out who they are but they the, the tears that that brought them were just from being told, oh, I forgot about this stuff, mm. actually, because we're so busy in the middle of everything. Yeah. That those those small little reminders um, that, that made a difference to to someone just from having lunch and them saying, oh, I'm, you know, I was going to get a bike, but now I need to buy a dishwasher. Just that, that ability to remind people of, do you know what, this is here for you. You don't have to yeah. use it. It makes a difference, then it's there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can always obviously... <clears throat> Save on your lunch either with discount vouchers through the platform or with your Pluxy card and a bit of cash back or take your cash back and buy yourselves lunch together. You know, the opportunity is there, but it is about the reminder, the education piece. It's about that communication. And you're right. We have busy lives. Things fall out of our brains. We sleep. Um, you know, you don't always remember that you have a cycle to work scheme, but it's, it's about ensuring that benefits are simple, clear, easy to access 
straightforward. You don't want anything to be overly complicated because um, sometimes it can feel overwhelming. And particularly thinking about, you know, with an EAP service, the most popular, it's an interesting stat, <clears throat> excuse me, so the most popular times for a call to the counselling service are actually between 6pm and 6am. Um, so not during the working day. It's also very challenging for an individual to reach out unless you are aware that that individual is, is um, you know, in crisis or, or leading into that way. Um, it, it can be really hard. You know, the bravest thing you can do and the scariest thing you can do is actually say that I need help. But giving somebody an EAP service, which is, you know, linked to their phone via an app so they can use it if they're awake at 3 a.m. in the comfort of their and the safe and secure space of their own home to be able to say, you know, that's that's the place for them to be able to speak to an individual that can support their well-being. You know, I always think you never underestimate the power that, that you can have to change people's lives. Um, and of course, that then creates a sense of um, gratitude, which is really important when you are thinking about your employer. You know, benefits also play into future proofing your business, into retention of employees, into recruitment of your new generation of employees. It, you know, everybody knows that that's relevant, especially in today's uh, benefits world, which has changed furiously over the last few years. So mm. it's about I, I always use the phrase, you know, conscious, sustainable benefits, because I think that's pretty much encompasses where we where we are on the thought process, Tom. Yeah, absolutely. So hopefully that was useful for everybody. And you, you've all you've all gathered a little bit more um of how we look after our people here at, at, at Pluxy. I don't know if you've got anything else to add, Tom, in terms of uh, sharing your your experience as one of our HR champions, as we like to call you. Yeah, you know, I think um, that's, that's very kind, Debbie. I think um, I would probably leave us on a couple of key things to consider. Um, you know, if I was to walk away from this webinar thinking, what what should I take away and what should I think about? Um, I think the first bit for me is that um, the well-being of our people plays such a critical role in productivity. It's not it's not a well-being topic for the sake of well-being. It actually, you can measure it through absenteeism or lost productivity um, or engagement in terms of the impact it has on productivity. Um, I think, you know, realising that over half of employees are struggling with financial well-being, uh, which has a, a direct impact to physical and mental well-being. Um, and creating, either creating the space or the optionality for people um, to manage their own solutions. Um, so, and the last two points, I think, is is that there is no one size fits all to this at all. It is about engaging with your people um, and starting from where you are. So you know, whether you have five benefits today or zero benefits today, think about implementing one thing that can make a difference to your people in dialogue with them is always a good approach. Mm. Absolutely. So um, I just wanted to double check before we round everything off, if there are any other questions at all from anybody, you know, please drop them in the chat. We've had, it's interesting that the Wellbeing Fund has been the topic, I think, Tom, that, that mm. sort of speaks volumes, really, in terms of how you are thinking about supporting your people and, and offering them, you know, anything more, because it is that and more approach, I think, when it comes to, to, yeah. the, to the benefits. Um, if if there are no questions, that's absolutely fine too. Hopefully, you know, you found it really, really interesting and, and quite insightful. And it's given you a bit of food for thought. If it is something that you'd like to discuss in more detail or you'd like to reach out to us and just find out about how we can help you to support your people um, with those, you know, three pillars of well-being. Um, I've dropped my email address in the chat so you can email me directly and one of our team will reach out and we can have a chat. Um, or indeed, you can. Um, you can discover Tom and I on LinkedIn, um, which, uh, well, you'll see our faces. It's quite obvious, really, um, who we are and, and what we do um, and how we how we can support you. But, you know, we would encourage everybody to, if you are curious, if you would like to know more, um, then let's just have a chat and uh, let's see how we can help to support you to support your people better. Yeah, thanks, Debbie. And I think I think I extend that. I've just I've just shared my email address as well because sometimes it's quite useful for for HR people maybe to have a conversation. Um, if you want to, it's in, it's in confidence. If you want to have a talk through how we implemented some things or just a sounding board, um, then please reach out. Absolutely, and I'm going to just quickly share our LinkedIn profiles because actually it might be a little bit easier um, for people to be able to see us. 
quite straightforward, really. I think when we're talking about um, finding our faces, it certainly is my face on my LinkedIn profile, <laughs> but it's quite a nice one for you to be able to um, to find us and see who we are. Um, so I'm not sure whether or not we are able to just simply share um, this. I'm hoping it's OK and it's come through for everybody. Um, but there you are, Tom and I, straightforward. I think you can scan the code on here if you wanted to as well. Forgive my um, terrible PowerPoint presentation skills, but there you go. And that's it. Well, thank you very much, everyone. I hope you have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Bye. -bye.